Hello everyone and welcome. Recently I attended Northwest Automotive Press Association's Mudfest, an event where I was able to try out 27 different all-wheel drive and 4x4 trucks and SUVs. Now I conducted one test with every single vehicle there, a 60 mile per hour to 0 mile per hour braking test on pavement. Now if you haven't yet watched my video on the Nissan Titan and how it outbraked a Mini Cooper, uh, in that video I go into the details of how I performed this test and whether or not you can trust the data. In this video, we're just going to be analyzing the data, not the test itself. And so we're going to be answering three questions. Uh, we're going to do this in slideshow form. And I know slideshows are pretty much the worst thing ever, uh, but uh, it's a great way to, to show all of this data in a shorter amount of time. Um, realistically, I'm not going to be putting, you know, plotting this on my whiteboard. So we're going to be answering three questions in this video. Do heavy cars have less grip? Uh, do wider tires have more grip? And what's the most important factor for tire grip? And so we're going to be answering this looking at the data from my test. So here we have a plot of all the different cars. There's 27 dots here on this screen. Weight on the left hand side from 3,000 pounds to 7,000 pounds. Stopping distance from 110 feet to 170 feet here on the right. And so here are all of the different cars which I tested. And as you can see, it's a pretty random plot. Now just to kind of fill out which ones uh, we've got here, BMW X4 had the shortest stopping distance, we'll get into why later on. Nissan Armada for its weight did really well, so a 6,000 pound vehicle and it's stopping pretty much even uh, with the Mitsubishi Outlander Sport. About a 3,250 pound vehicle, uh, also stopping at about 124 feet. Um, you know, one of the better ones for sure, but also very impressive that the Nissan was right there with it. And then the heaviest vehicle of our test, stopping at a little over 163, 162 feet, uh, was the Ram Power Wagon, weighing in at about 7,000 pounds. Now, if we plot a trend line on this data, we can determine whether or not there's actually a correlation. And as you can see, there's a slight linear positive correlation. But the R value, and basically this just tells us uh, how relevant is this trend line. One would be it's perfectly relevant. Zero would be it's completely meaningless. And as you can see, this is a very low R value. So really, this isn't a very meaningful trend line here. Um, and, you know, a big driving factor will be that outlier up there, which, you know, stops uh, very far and it has, weighs quite a bit. So there's not a real correlation uh, between weight and stopping distance. Uh, the only correlation is there is a slight correlation that as you increase in weight, you will increase in stopping distance. Again, that Nissan Armada kind of uh, putting the myth uh, to rest that, you know, you can't be heavy and have a good stopping distance. It does it. Uh, so moving on. Here we have stopping distance versus tire width. So I took all of the different vehicles tire widths uh, versus their stopping distance. And, you know, this is the plot you get. And also interesting because it's quite scattered. There doesn't seem to be a strong correlation between the tire width and how quickly it stopped. Uh, the widest tires were on a Jeep Wrangler. This actually had some aftermarket mud tires. Um, the Ford Raptor, super wide tires on it, but also not stopping all that great. Ram Power Wagon, uh, pretty wide tires, third widest of the group and long stopping distance. But, you know, part of this, there is a correlation uh, because heavier cars are going to tend to have wider tires. So it's somewhat similar of a plot uh, as our weight uh, versus, versus just looking at width. BMW is still doing the best, uh, even though its tires are somewhat in the middle of the group as far as the width. There's plenty of cars uh, with narrower tires that are stopping in a longer distance. Plenty of cars with wider tires stopping in a longer distance. Volkswagen Alltrack, uh, one of the, you know, narrowest tires here, the only car with 205 tires on it, doing a really nice job of stopping, and this was actually one of the most fun cars to drive out there of the entire group. This Volkswagen Alltrack is a blast to drive, uh, so I did want to kind of highlight that. Uh, Toyota Highlander, just one kind of sitting here in the middle of all this data, just for reference. And we will get into later in the video uh, all of the numbers for all the different vehicles. So here's our trend line for t stopping distance versus tire width, R value of 0.206, which again means not a strong correlation. And actually what this correlation is telling us is that as tires get wider, the stopping distance increases, which, you know, uh, intuitively we know pretty much isn't really true. So is there a way, you know, we can manipulate the data to show for the fact that, you know, heavier cars tend to have wider tires. And yes, of course there is. So what I have done here 
And I know these units make no sense, so just hear me out. Uh, I am not the person that puts millimeters and inches on tires. Someone decided that a long time ago. So what's happening here is we're taking the weight per millimeter of tire per tire. So for example, this number five right here means that on the front left tire alone, you're going to have five pounds of weight for every millimeter of that tire. And so what that does is it kind of normalizes it for the weight so that we can discuss based on you know how much pressure is actually acting on the tire per its width. So you would expect to see that tires with less weight on them for how wide they are uh, would have better stopping distances. And that is indeed what you see, but with an extremely, uh, poor correlation, 0.137 R value, meaning that there isn't really a strong correlation here uh, with the data as far as, you know, that there being that trend that as there's less weight on the tire uh, per its width, the stopping distance is shorter. So interesting to see that, you know, weight and width, uh, just based on all of this data, uh, doesn't doesn't show a strong correlation with stopping distance. Now, if you were to take the same vehicle and increase its tire width or decrease its weight, you would expect to see the stopping distance decrease. And the reason why is something called tire load sensitivity, which I will include a link to in the video description uh, explaining the physics of why that happens. So just looking at some of the different vehicles on this uh, plot we've got here, Ram Power Wagon, of course, that outlier as usual. Uh, the Jeep Wrangler, the reason I have the star here is because I don't actually think uh, I have an accurate weight for the Jeep Wrangler. It had a ton of aftermarket parts on it and it had aftermarket tires on it, big, huge tires that I'm sure are very heavy. So I don't think I have an accurate weight. I don't think it's actually three pounds uh, per millimeter of width on the tire. I think it's probably going to be floating up more in this range, but I don't know what the weight is because we didn't have a scale out there to weigh all of these aftermarket parts. Uh, Mitsubishi Outlander Sport is the lightest vehicle of the group, and there you can see uh, stopping distance doing pretty well. Uh, Nissan Armada, again, one of the heaviest vehicles in the group, and here it is uh, doing a pretty good job of stopping quite early. Okay, so we've determined that tire width and tire uh, weight, the, the amount of weight the vehicle weighs, uh, don't strongly correlate with stopping distance. So now I split all of the vehicles up based on what kind of tire they had. So if a vehicle had all season tires, here we see that they stopped between about 123 feet, 122 feet, and 140 feet, uh, versus all-terrain tires stopped from 133-ish, somewhere in there, all the way to the 163-ish, which is that Ram Power Wagon. Mud terrain, the Jeep Wrangler was the only vehicle with that tire, and then the only vehicle and the fastest stopping distance was that BMW X4. So the reason why this BMW beat everyone, even though it doesn't have the widest tires or the least weight, is because it was on summer tread. And so, you know, destroyed the competition on road. Uh, Honda CRV did the best of all the vehicles with the uh, all season tires, stopping in at like 122 something. Jeep Compass, Trailhawk, and the Lexus GX 460 are on all season tires. And those were stopping at about 140 feet. Uh, the Nissan Titan really does an incredible job of stopping on road, and that's why I made a separate video explaining how it did this, how it's able to break out of this norm for all-terrain tires and into this all-season territory, and yet still do well off-road because it is an all-terrain tire. And then the Jeep Wrangler here in the mud terrain tire, uh, you know, kind of performing like an all-terrain tire as far as stopping distance. Uh, so pretty interesting to see, but you can see that there is a strong correlation between the tire type and, you know, where the stopping distance is. So all season, not quite as good as summer, all terrain, not quite as good as all season. Now here's where things get interesting because well, I also did another test from 20 miles per hour to zero off-road on a dirt path. Uh, so this is just basically a straight dirt strip. Um, and I took all the cars, accelerated above 20 miles per hour, and then did my same stopping distance. And so what's interesting to see here, these, this is our same graph that we were just looking at uh, two slides earlier. It's just kind of condensed now, uh, and we're looking at 20 to zero rather than 60 to zero. So here's all the all seasons bunched up. Here's the all terrains, mud terrain, and the summer tire. Summer tire, of course, doing the best. And then above that, this is our off-road testing group. So these are all the same cars, uh, but in two different groups, on-road and off-road. 
And so what's interesting to see here is that we basically flip uh, the characteristics of the tires. So the all-terrain tires have great stopping distance off-road. They don't have great stopping distance on-road. The all-season tires are kind of a mix uh, between on and off-road, uh, but they do worse, generally speaking, than the all-terrain tires. The mud-terrain tire not doing great on-road, but doing fantastic off-road. The summer tire doing, you know, the absolute best uh, on-road and one of the worst off-road. So pretty interesting to see that, you know, everything pretty much flips when you go off-road versus on-road. And we can plug in a few of these. Uh, what was most interesting to me is that the Ram Power Wagon uh, had the absolute worst stopping distance on the road and the absolute best stopping distance off-road. And then just another data point here, the Mitsubishi Outlander Sport uh, really fought outside of its class. Um, the best all-season tire and it's the lightest vehicle. So pretty interesting how well the Mitsubishi Outlander Sport did. This is of course the BMW. This is of course the Jeep Wrangler. So why did the Ram Power Wagon, uh, you know, have that shortest stopping distance off-road, but the longest distance on-road? And so this is where I want to talk about the difference between all-season and all-terrain tires. I've got this amazing sketch that I did, uh, truly breathtaking imagery here. So we have an all-season tire on the road. And when it's on the road, you've got less tread block movement. You don't have these, you know, knobby patches here, these knobby tread blocks. Uh, you've got a large contact patch and you've got an on-road compound. And so all of that adds up to a great stopping distance on road. An all-terrain tire, on the other hand, has this uh, tread block movement. You know, you're going to have movement of these tread blocks and that's not going to be as good for stopping on road. You've got a smaller contact patch as a result of the style of the tread. And you've got this off-road compound, this compound that's better suited uh, for off-road conditions. Versus once we go off-road, uh, the all-season tire isn't quite as able to dig in, and so it's going to slide across the surface, and you'll have, you know, ABS try and minimize that slip. Uh, but an interesting thing that ABS does off-road is that it will try to allow for a bit more slip, uh, because by allowing for more slip, what you do is you allow mud and dirt, etc., to pile up in front of the tire, and so that kind of helps you slow down. So if you just basically lock this tire up, you'll actually do really well off-road, whereas on-road, if you were to just lock up, you'll slide and you won't do as well. So because it's got these, you know, knobby grooves in it, it can help dig into that. Uh, so that Ram Power Wagon's super heavy. It's got these knobby tires. It can dig into that dirt, and when you lock it up, it's going to shovel this, you know, mound in front of it so it can stop in a, in a nice short distance. So it's interesting to see, you know, the difference there between the different tire types. So what have we learned? Well, we learned that tire width and tire load play a minimal role in grip versus tire type. That's not to say that tire width and tire load aren't important. They are. But versus the tire type, uh, that's going to be your most critical component. You know, is it an all-season? Is it a summer tire? Uh, what's the compound made of? That's what's going to determine really your stopping distance. So if you want more grip, you know, if you're using this to modify your own car and you want more grip, the best method is to try different tires first, different tire compounds, different tire types, and then work with tire width or weight reduction. You don't want to just say, you know what, I, I don't have quite enough grip, I'm going to buy my exact same tire and a wider tire. Unless you have the best tire out there on the market, you're not going to improve your stopping distance that much versus if you were to just switch over to a better tire. So focus on tire type first, then tire width and weight reduction if you're trying to improve uh, your tire grip. So here is a list of all the different vehicles I tested and their stopping distance. There's a couple things I do want to point out here. If you see a star next to the data, this means that I didn't actually, uh, I wasn't able to achieve a 60 to 0. I was only able to achieve a 50 to 0. So this number right here is extrapolated based on the 50 to 0 data using an average of all the different cars, 50 to zeros, and then extrapolating that out to the 60 to 0. Now I did a lot of playing around with the data and I I am very confident in these numbers being accurate within a couple feet. So, you know, know that this isn't the real number versus anything that doesn't have a star next to it, but that it is going to be pretty close to the actual stopping distance based on its 50 to 0, uh, which gives you a good indication of its 60 to 0. And, you know, as you can see here, we've got summer at the top, all season as we go through. Uh, the one exception, the Nissan Titan Pro 4X, which I have a separate video covering because it is pretty fascinating how they're able to do this. Uh, the Jeep Wrangler Sport with the mud terrain and then all of our all-terrain tires. Another thing to note is that the Jeep Wrangler and the Honda Ridgeline were both on aftermarket tires. Uh, these were on aftermarket tires. This was 
uh, you know, a giant 315 or 317 BF Goodrich Munch Ring. These are 37 inch tires. And the Honda Ridgeline was on these Nitto Terra Grapplers aftermarket tires. Uh, so you can see the Honda Ridgeline, one of the best stopping distances in the dirt, uh, but one of the worst on the pavement. That's a result of those aftermarket tires. Uh, and another interesting thing, I was told that for the off-road testing, the Ram Power Wagon did lower its uh, pressure. I believe it was 15 PSI. So traditionally, this is at about 60 PSI, and they lowered that pressure to, I believe, 45 PSI, which definitely will help it, you know, kind of dig in, give it more contact with the ground, and give it a better stopping distance. So not only did it have the right tires for it, it had the right tire pressure, uh, which was critical. I believe everything else was running at stock tire pressure. Uh, so this one, you know, for the off-road portion did lower it. But you know, that's something if you're going to go off-road, uh, you, you would want to do. You would want to lower the pressure a bit. Um, you know, not necessarily fair in the comparison because not everybody was doing that. Uh, but impressive nonetheless. You know, it's not just the tire pressure that's the reason why this got to you know, 22 feet and nothing else was there, but interesting to see. So, uh, you know, you can look over this data, enjoy, you know, looking at all the numbers here. We've got weight, tire width, tire brand, tire model. So you can actually do some tire comparison here. Um, some of the cars do have the same tire, for example, the Honda CRV Touring and the Kia Sportage SX Turbo, both on Hankook Kinergy GTs, both with a very good uh, 60 to 0, 122.5 versus, you know, 124.5. So both of them did really well. It seems like a nice tire. Uh, you know, you can you can look at tire comparisons on here. So thank you guys for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.